The group called Stop the Drug War opposes the worldwide prohibition of most drugs and makes their case online with this. It's just a part of it. Quote, we believe the global drug war has fueled violence, civil instability, and public health crises, and we see the arrest and punishment-based policies still prevalent for drugs as unjust. Their ideas and their platform clearly out of the mainstream. But really, if you think about it, so was the Portuguese doctor who started their program in the 70s, which has resulted in major, albeit imperfect, improvements in that country. So today I spoke with the executive director of Stop the Drug War, David Borden, to get some straight answers on some tough questions. David, we've been discussing um, the system that they have right now in Portugal. And you support drug legalization, which is legal beginning to end. So in that case, Portugal is kind of what, a halfway point? It's a halfway point of, of one type. They've uh, decriminalized users. Uh, they've implemented a, an extensive and, and diverse set of treatment programs, uh, and they're doing a very good job with it. Another type of halfway system that's found in uh, a number of European countries and Canada now is uh, maintenance programs for people who are already addicted. Like methadone, to, things like that. Uh, like methadone, but um, what they do in these places, Switzerland, Holland, Germany, Canada, Denmark, is um, uh, people who are addicted to heroin who don't succeed with methadone or buprenorphine, a newer uh, alternative, uh, uh, get heroin from a clinic instead. And they have uh, amazing results in uh, people uh, avoiding health incidents, going back to work, becoming normal people. So one of the lessons that uh, heroin clinics teach us is that a lot of the harm from being addicted in many cases uh, comes from the situation that we create through the prohibition system. Legal and stigma and things like that. Um, Correct. Okay. And the, the high prices of street drugs driving people to engage in prostitution or, or street crime, a lot of that can be avoided. You know, I think the average person, David, they hear these arguments and they say, okay, I hear you, but, you know, for instance, uh, growing up uh, as a child of the 80s, I remember Nancy Reagan on TV talking about this. I remember doing D.A.R.E. in school. But then again, I think, what if I were to walk down the street and there are heroin addicts just laid out everywhere? Would that not be the worst case scenario? Uh, this idea that uh, a drug use, drug addiction would become far more prevalent. Uh, th none of the serious thinkers on the issue believe there would be skyrocketing uh, use. Hmm. Um, Why? So there are differences in how people react to prefer understand uh, the drugs. Meaning people want to feel good, they don't want to be completely consumed by the drug. Right, okay. and a lot of people just don't like them, and most people understand that those drugs are, uh, are risky, at least in the intense forms that are available in the black market uh, today. Most use of these drugs, most use of any drug, is done by the people who use who individually use the most drugs, the heavy users. Okay. And uh, if the price comes down and maybe other barriers uh, uh, become, uh, become lighter, uh, that you know, they'll be able to afford to use more and more people will um, go that route, become heavy users. They don't, they don't think there'll be addicts everywhere. I see. And they tend to agree with me that people who are addicted will be better off than they are today under the current system.